Om Sai Ram, this is a reading of the Vishnu Sahasara Nama and this is being read from a book by Swami Chinmayananda called A Thousand Ways to the Transcendental. In each chapter, I'll be reading 50 of these glorious names of the Lord Vishnu along with possible meanings and implications of each name. Number 451, Sarva Darshi, All Knower, as He is the pure consciousness in all living beings, all knowledge knowledge in all beings is illumined by him. Just as the sun is the eye of the universe, so the consciousness is the illuminator of everything. Number 452, Vimuktatma, the ever-liberated self. The Supreme, though he expresses himself through the equipment, is never conditioned by the matter envelopments through which he apparently expresses himself. Just as the waves rise, exist and dissolve in the ocean, the equipment of experiences rise, play, and dissolve themselves in him. He is ever liberated, never shackled by gross matter. This great principle of Paramatma is Sri Narayana, says the Shruti Upanishad. Number 453, Sarvetnya or Omniscient. He is the principle of consciousness and therefore he is the illuminator of all thoughts, all intentions, motives, emotions, and all sense perceptions in an individual. The meaning is the same as in Sarvadarshi. Number 454, Jnana Muttamam, the supreme knowledge of all other knowledge. The self is the supreme knowledge, for without the consciousness, no knowledge is possible. Number 455, Shuvrata, the one who is ever performing the pure vow. It is a sacred vow of the Lord that he has to give shelter and protection to all those who totally surrender themselves unto him. To give shelter to all living creatures, this is my vow, says Sri Rama. This term can also refer to he who has performed tapas for a long number of years on the mount of Nara Narayana in Badrinath. Number 456, Sumuka, one who has an enchanting face. Truth is beauty and beauty truth. In all conditions, the Lord is ever cheerful and brings to his face the dignified beauty of calm repose. When the devotees come and surrender at his sacred feet, Narayana is the one of infinite mercy who beams with joy at the devotion of the surrender. Number 457, Sukshma, one who is subtler than the subtlest. In Vedanta terminology, subtlety indicates pervasiveness. Therefore, the term means all-pervasive. The Upanishad says, the Lord is all-pervading, subtler than the subtlest. Number 458, Sugosha, of auspicious sound. This this is the name of the conch that Krishna blew in the opening of the Mahabharata war. The sound of Vishnu is the essence of all Vedas as all the four Vedas have come from him, that is, from the Supreme. Hence, the term auspicious sound. Number 459, Sukhada, one who confers happiness. It can also mean in Sanskrit, one who is the destroyer of joy. Here, of course, it means one who gives joy to his devotees and takes away joy from those who are undivine. Number 460, Suhurt, the friend of all living creatures. A true friend is one who gives all that he possesses without expecting anything in return. Number 461, Manohara, one who is the looter of the mind or charming. Not only is the Lord beauty incarnate, but he compels the attention of the devotee to come away from all other sense objects to to dwell upon his enchanting form. Thus Vishnu is one who generates an irresistible joy in the mind of his devotees and compels them to spend their time in constant worship. Number 462, Jitta Krodha, one who has conquered anger. By the one term here, anger, we should consider all the six inner enemies, Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Mada, and Matsarya. These six constitute the types of thoughts in man, the six categories into which all his mental activities fall. One who has conquered all these means one who is beyond the mind, that is, the self. Number 463, Veera Bahu, one having mighty, valiant arms. From time to time, he has to incarnate in order to put down the wicked and thereby protect 
neglect the good. Number 464, Vidarana, one who splits asunder or destroys. In the man-lion form, Narasimha, Lord Vishnu appears to tear open and kill Hiranyakaship. Again, in order to destroy Hiranyakaship and to lift the earth from the ocean, Sri Narayana had to take the form of the great boar. Accordingly, in the Sanskrit vocabulary, Bhudhara is a synonym for boar. Dara means to split or tear open. Thus, the meaning of the divine boar can be squeezed out from the term Vidharana used here. Number 465, Swapna, one who puts people to sleep. Lord Vishnu, as Ishwara, has for himself the total vasana as an equipment for his self-expression as Ishwara. He, through his maya, veils each individual and renders them ignorant of their own divine nature. This veiling power, Avarana Shakti, creates many agitations due to which individuals rush out for sense gratification. Since Ishwara, thus with his maya power, deludes everybody, he gathers himself this epithet swapna meaning the mighty stupefying force number 466 swavasha the one who has everything under his own personal control the totally independent since he is the supreme consciousness all living creatures and phenomenal powers are functioning by his grace drawing their capacities to exist and act from him if he withdraws his patronage everything in this universe must stop functioning immediately he is supremely independent inasmuch as though the world of objects needs him, he is entirely self-sufficient and needs no one for his existence. Thus, he is totally free. The waves need the ocean, but the ocean is totally independent of the wave's existence. Number 467, Vyapi, all-pervading. Pervasiveness in philosophy indicates subtlety. Thus, all-pervading means that which is subtler than the subtlest. This concept is again sustained by the physical observations in the world. The cause always pervades all the effects. The gold pervades all ornaments. The entire universe is an effect and he is the cause. He pervades all and everything at all times. Thus, the all-pervading in its suggestion indicates that he is the ultimate cause and in his pervasiveness is ever-present everywhere and in everything, presiding over all behaviors, actions, and work everywhere in the universe. Number 468, Naikatma, many-souled. The Lord, the infinite, though ever the one, expresses himself as the many, while manifesting himself in the form of the universe. It is he, the one great consciousness, that expresses himself as the creator, sustainer, and destroyer in order to maintain the play of the eternal dance among the phenomenal things and deeds. He who becomes the Trinity is the great Vishnu. Number 469, Naika Karma Krit, the one who does many actions as he is the one lord of all evolution, preservation, and involution of the universe. No activity can ever take place without him presiding over it. Number 470, Vatsara, the abode of the Lord. Not only is the Lord living in each one of us as our inner soul, but he is at once the all-pervading essence in which the entire universe exists, and as such, he alone is the abode in which we live, breathe, and act. Thus, as the abode of the creatures, he is the endless time and the infinite space at once. For in the time-space field alone do things exist. The term vatsa in Sanskrit also means calf. The word under discussion, therefore, can also mean one who gives away calves. This has reference to Krishna who returned to the Gopas all the calves when they were taken away by the enemy. Number 471, Vatsala, the supremely affectionate, one who loves his devotees extremely. Narayana is one who has got more affection towards his devotees than all the paternal and maternal love in the world put together. Supreme love is the meaning of the word 
Lord Vatsala. Lord Narayana is love incarnate. Number 472, Vatsi, the father, one who has an infinite number of children. The Lord considers the entire living kingdom as his own children and nurses and nourishes them. It can also be interpreted as one who trains and protects the calves in the herd. Number 473, Ratna Garba, the jewel wound. Like the ocean, one who has rich wealth concealed in himself. On the whole, the term Ratna Garba only means that the Lord is quick in his bestowing all the desired objects on his devotees. Number 474, Dhaneshwara, the Lord of Wealth. Here the term wealth means all the good things in the universe, all objects of happiness. He is described in the Puranas as the Lord of the Goddess Lakshmi, and as such, he is ever the master of all wealth. The greatest of wealth is, of course, liberation, and Lord Narayana is the Ishwara of this great wealth. He blesses the true devotees with the experience of complete liberation from the entanglements and sorrows of the vestures of matter around us. Number 475, Dharma Gup, one who protects the Dharma. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, in every cycle, I shall make manifest to re-establish dharma. Number 476, Dharmakrit, one who enacts dharma. Though he, as the absolute consciousness that illuminates everything, is beyond all dharma and adharma, Sri Narayana exemplifies what righteousness is by his own conduct. He is therefore called as Dharma Pravartaka. In the various incarnations, the Lord has exemplified how this generation should live under the ever-changing kaleidoscopic pattern of circumstances that play around us at all times. Number 477, Dharmi, the supporter of Dharma, meaning the very seat of all Dharma. Just as the waves exist in the ocean, just as the cotton supports the cloth, just as all ornaments exist in gold. So Sri Narayana, the infinite truth, is the very essence and support of the entire universe. Narayana is the throne at which all righteousness takes its refuge. Without direct reference to him and his glory, righteousness has no meaning, just as law books of a country are empty pages when the government falls. Number 478, Sat, the existence in all things and beings is the same ever and it is all pervading. The sun exists, the space between the sun and the earth exists, the ocean and the creatures therein exist, the physiological organs and their functions, mind and its activities, the intellect and its agitations all exist. This ever-present principle of existence is Sri Narayana, that which remains the same without any change in and through all changes, unaffected ever, same in the past, present and future, is called in the Vedanta as Satya. One who has all these natures is called Sat Purusha. In the Upanishads, the Supreme Brahman is indicated as Satya. This, O child, indeed was Sat. In the Gita, while describing the changeless factor behind the eternally changing matter, Bhagwan says, That which is the all-pervading in this world, that alone is indestructible, and no one can destroy it. Number 479, Asat, the conditioned, limited, the one who appears at this moment as the limited, conditioned, and therefore confined only to the world of plurality. That which actually is not, but apparently seems to be there, is called a delusion, and this is indicated by the word Asat. In the Vedantic terminology, the higher self is ever immutable and eternal, while the lower self, constituted of all the universe of manifested things and beings, is mutable and ephemeral. Sri Narayana himself is, in his apara nature, expressing as the world of the many that we today recognize around us. Bhagwan Sri Krishna confesses to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, I am at once immortality and mortality. I am both existence and non-existence. Number 480, Charam, the perishing, one who is the very immutable self in all things that appear to suffer from constant mutation, the changeless core in the midst of all changes. All the changeable and variable things and beings of the universe play in him who is the only 
substratum and therefore the immutable eternal reality is called here as the mutable the changing and the dying waves are all ever nothing but the changeless ocean indeed number 481 aksharam imperishable in order to recognize the change there must be a changeless entity knowing it if one ornament is to become another there must be indeed the changeless consistent gold permanently supporting it all the time in the same way there must be a changeless factor which must be the essential core that holds together the pattern of the constant changes which together constitute the play of the universe this changeless factor is called narayana krishna says in the bhagavad gita all creatures together constitute the chara purusha and the changeless in all creatures is the akshara purusha number 482 avidnyata the non knower here we must carefully understand the term knower the knower of the emotions and thoughts is the self imprisoned in the body mind and the intellect and therefore functioning as the perceiver feeler thinker called in the vedanta shastra as the jiva this individualized personality is the doer and the enjoyer in the calamitous world of activities shri narayana is the pure self who has not been contaminated by the matter vestures their agitated nature and consequent sorrows therefore vishnu the pure self is indicated here as the non knower Number 483 Sahasra Amsha the thousand raid as the pure consciousness he is effulgent and in the Upanishads we read that even the sun moon and stars gain their effulgence from him alone in fact the Upanishads conclude that all living creatures are resplendent after his effulgence alone or we can say that it means Sri Narayana in the living form of the sun illumines and nourishes the world of living creatures because the name of the sun in sanskrit is sahasra amsha in praising the sun it is usual to sing of him as surya narayana number 484 vidhata all supporter as the final substratum for everything the lord supports the entire universe of living creatures and nobody supports him he alone is his own support the lord is at once the material instrumental and efficient cause for the universe of forms number 480 85 krita lakshana one who is famous because of six qualities such as glory righteousness fame wealth knowledge and detachment again following the puranic literature shri narayana is the one who made on his own bosom the great mark of the feet of maharishi bhrigu in fact from the standpoint of pure vedanta the term indicates the ever existing pure consciousness which is the very goal to be ultimately achieved for liberation lakshana also means the scriptural textbooks and therefore the term can also mean he who is the author of the scriptures number 486 gabasthanami the center of the supreme planetary system the sanskrit term gabasthi means rays and the term nemi means the spokes therefore the term indicates one who is the hub of the wheel of light in which the spokes are his own rays of brilliancy astronomically we can consider this as the sun the center of the planetary system subjectively he is the atma the self effulgent jant consciousness beaming himself out to the worlds of matter number 487 satvastha abiding in sattva maya is constituted of the three gunas unactivity sattva activity rajas and inactivity tamas when the maya is predominantly constituted of sattva it becomes the vehicle for the supreme brahman to express as god shri narayana the lord is essentially constituted tutored of the sattva guna and therefore he is pure truthfulness in nature it can also mean he who remains in all beings number 488 simha the lion due to his great exploits in fighting the negative forces during his various incarnations he is indicated as the lion among beings in the universe also in sanskrit any part of a name can indicate the full name
name. Thus, Bhima means Bhima Sena or Bhama means Satya Bhama. Similarly, Simha here might mean a part of the Lord's name as Narasimha. Narayana had taken the form of the man lion in order to end the tyranny of Hiranyakaship and bless his God devoted son Prahlada. Number 489 Bhuta Maheshwara, the great Lord of Beings. One who is the Lord who orders, commands, regulates, and presides over all activities of all living creatures and hence is ever the ruler of all creatures. Number 490 Adi Deva, the first deity. Or it can also mean one who is first and one who is resplendent. Further, we can also take it to mean that he is the first Deva, meaning he is the god of all gods. The term Adi also means one who eats. The term Deva can mean one who evolves. Thus, the term can mean one who evolves in eating up by consuming the names and forms. This implies that to the extent one withdraws himself from his false occupations with the perceived names and forms, he moves deeper and deeper into the experiences of the Divine Lord in himself. With this idea in mind, the Lord is described by this term, one who evolves in consuming the names and forms. Number 491, Mahadeva, the great deity. He is the source of all consciousness and from him have risen all further deities and beings. Therefore, it is right to consider him the Supreme Lord. Number 492, Devasha, the Lord of all Devas. He is the very consciousness in the gods themselves. Therefore, in his unquestionable prominence, he is addressed here as God of all gods. Number 493, Deva Guru, one who is the king of gods, that is Indra, and one who is the teacher or guru. In short, he is the protector and advisor of the very Indra, who is the king of the gods. Number 494, Uttara, one who helps to lift us from the ocean of samsar. It also conveys the most excellent meaning of one who is greater and nobler than all all other deities. The Rig Veda declares, He is the most excellent of all. Number 495, Gopati, the shepherd, as one who played the part of a cowherd in his Krishna incarnation. The term Go in Sanskrit has got four meanings. The cattle, the earth, the speech, and the Vedas. In all these meanings, he is the Lord or Pati, that is, the Lord of cattle, Lord of earth, Lord of speech, the Lord about whom all all the Vedas speak of as the very goal. Number 496, Gopta, the protector. He is the protector of all living creatures in as much as if he were not there, the creatures could not exist. He is the very existence in the living kingdom. Number 497, Jnana Gamya, the one who is to be attained only through the subtle perception of Jnana. He is not attained either by actions or by progeny or by wealth. Only through pure knowledge alone is he experienced. Here the word knowledge does not mean the ordinary knowledge of things. The experience of truth is gained only on transcending the intellect. Thus, crossing the barriers of non-apprehension, the meditator comes to apprehend the reality. This subjective first-hand apprehension is called true knowledge or jnana. By this one process alone can one attain the infinite, hence this term. Number 498, Puratana, he who existed even before time. That from which even the concept of time itself arose is the infinite truth, and therefore truth cannot be measured in terms of time. Therefore, he is called the ancient, for he transcends time. Number 499, Shadira Bhuta Brit, one who nurses and nourishes the very elements from which the bodies are constituted. The Lord is the controller of those five elements. Number 500, Bhokta, the enjoyer or protector. The term Bhokta can be dissolved in two ways. Number one, it means the protector. And number two, it means the enjoyer. According to the Vedanta, the Lord in his trans 
transcendental glory as the atma is neither the doer nor the enjoyer and yet here the lord is taken as the enjoyer only in the sense that the experiencer ego that is the jiva is also nothing other than the supreme in its final essence om sai ram and this brings us to the end of names 451 through 500 of the vishnu sahasranama